All right, guys. Let's get the uh, let's get the stream going. Uh, it's uh, Monday morning here, 8 a.m. Well, no, uh, fake news. It's March 8th, and it's 8:57 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday morning. Um, just starting a little bit early. Nothing too crazy. Just uh, watching a few tickers, and I feel like maybe we're going to do a little bit more pre-market trading. So I wanted to start early here a little bit. Obviously, right now we're watching ANCN and EYES from yesterday. And why do I have my headphones in? I just realized. Let me take these out. <clears throat> Put them away. <clears throat> All right, so EYES was Friday's gapper. USA medical device company, 13 million float, now 33 million market cap. They had the really big FDA news with its retinal prosthesis uh, system. The prosthesis uh, system, sorry about that. To allow people um, to see a little bit. Um, sounded really big. Um, obviously, the stock reacted very, very well to this company or to this catalyst. And um, if we just go to EYES, <clears throat> this is actually the one I was trading um, the most, but I'm up ne not necessarily the most. Uh, I was actually red for pretty much all pre-market on EYES until um, I think this pop right here put me back in the green. This was a pretty decent uh, win. Uh, and here I got shaken out, um, even though this could have technically been the best trade of the, of the day, um, at least pre-market for sure. So I don't know, right now I'm just kind of you know, sitting, sitting on my fingers a little bit. I think, you know, right here is a interesting pullback spot, big support roughly around 840. So this might be a good little dip buy area, but I'm not sure if I want to be dip buying um, below VWAP on eyes at the moment. Uh, this ticker also flushes a lot. So it's it's been a tricky one to trade because, you know, similar situation right here, this would have been a great pullback. I mean, this is identical to what we had here. Um, and then this one ended up flushing and the flushes are always kind of strong here. I mean, this one, uh, around 20%, pretty nasty. We've had multiple other um, failed breakouts on this ticker. Um, this is also why on Friday, I never really got aggressive trading this one because um, it was it was quite flushy at first until this really nice leg to the upside. So I'm not sure how I wanna be trading this one. I'll probably be getting more aggressive when we break to new highs, especially on the first and second pullbacks, otherwise, I don't know. There, there's definitely some dip trading opportunity. If it's ranging, sometimes it's good to be trading it. Um, but yeah, again, I'm a little nervous about the flushes overall. Um, so yesterday, yeah, we closed pretty high here at 550. So, you know, right now we're pretty much back here at, we're just at 950. So, you know, how high, how, how high, I gotta figure out if I can speak, uh, is this ticker gonna run? You know, that's the big question. Um, 10's really, or like 950 is the big resistance I think everyone's looking at. Um, we got some interesting spots around here, which was a significant breakout territory, roughly at 11. Uh, we had some pullbacks to there as well. Uh, next major support zone, probably around 13.5 or so, maybe 12.5. Um, but yeah, we'll keep an eye on this one for now. I mean, it is over the 180 day moving average and uh, this could be a multi-day runner. So, you know, it, it closed, it didn't get back all of its profit, you know, closed kind of in the middle. Um, and now it's gonna, from what it looks like, it's gonna open, you know, right here at 875, let's say it opened here. Um, so that, you know, definitely good upside, I, I would argue. So, uh, so far I'm, I'm fairly bullish on, on what we're seeing here on this ticker. Uh, let's go here to about 11, uh, just around 11. This is a pretty nice spot. So this is going to be that second zone I'm looking for. If we break 10, see if we can run to 11. And if we can break 11, uh, we got some interesting areas here at 14.2. Uh, but then I would argue somewhere here in this area as well, where we had a big retest originally around 13. So definitely keep an eye out for 13. I don't want to over clutter my chart. Um, with support and resistance, but I think those those are going to be some bigger zones. I would I would definitely keep an eye out for. Uh, in terms of A and C N, this is the new ticker today. 
And right now, actually, ANC and Eyes is pulling back to that 850, 840 zone that we were kind of interested in just a second ago. So this could be a really good dip by opportunity. Let's just kind of watch this one. It cracked it for a second, went to 47. Solid 1% bounce there, but it was kind of slower so let's go to ANCN uh, this is the new ticker uh, USA medical device company second site medical products no sorry I was just I was like wait a second why does that sound just like eyes it was it's because it was eyes I was just reading the wrong one uh, ANCN NASDAQ USA biotech and Chiano uh, therapeutics 3 million flow 25 million market cap that's beautiful you guys know that fits exactly in our checklist So sounding pretty good there. The thing I don't like about this ticker is I have yet to find a proper catalyst. I don't know about you guys, but I'm still searching for a proper catalyst. I might have overlooked something, but I don't see anything in... Uh... Okay, here, here even in TD Ameritrade, this new screener, not seeing any company-specific news to justify the price action. That's kind of what I was feeling like might pop up. Uh, there's some... Stock twits here. Why is this moving? FDA approval question mark. So it looks like other people are confused as well. Targeting approaches to fight cancer. Sounds good. See if they have any press releases that kind of went through January 2nd. No, not seeing anything there. Their website's a little not user friendly. No SEC filings that I see. I don't know. Don't see why this ticker's up. So I guess we'll just kind of play this one by ear. But overall, 3 million flow, 25 million mark cap is pretty nice. It also has pretty decent um, rate of change uh, when it's on its upside. The problem is this ticker, um, you know, I had that 4 a.m. Monday run right when uh, pre-market opened up. I did a few trades on this one looking for continuations. Uh, this one I held so long, I got st I just stopped out the second it went up because I thought it was going to go back down. Actually ended up being a nice run. So classic, you know, me move where I sell too early. Uh, either way, you know, ANCN, when it does pop, it's it's quite nice. It, it goes fairly quickly, but uh, I mean, this is a 30 plus percent rally here in a few uh, minutes. So it's nice. It's just, it really gave back a lot of its pre-market highs. So I'm not, I don't know, 37% giving back. That's kind of a lot. Uh, kind of no joke. Um, we have this high here at 11. Don't want to forget that. And then 950 is definitely... A spot to watch between 950 and 880 um, big resistance at this area so let's quickly go to a daily chart see if we can what else we can pull out of here uh, we had the close there at 8 so that's a kind of a significant zone we had a close here as well at 10.5 so we got rejected here pre-market at that 880 that we were just talking about there's definitely bigger support around 550. That's where we had the first bounce off of. Right here, you can see we've kind of came down to 550, tested about three, four times, and then you know popped back to the upside. VWAP is a big resistor right now, so it's clearly trending to the downside. I don't know. I'm not stoked about eyes or ANCN. I'm almost more excited about eyes. You know, on a second green day, you're you're risking an offering a little bit more. With ANCN, at least, you know, pulled back a little bit, but the pullback was quite strong, more than I would typically want. So that's my red flag on ANCN. Uh, we have a new ticker popping up right now, MVT. Fourteen percent move there. Let's quickly throw this one on the uh, weekly chart. Uh, okay, it's a it's a gap down play. 
well, it was it was a gap down play, and then it's on a massive dead cat bounce, or just a bounce. I don't want to be too pessimistic. Um, either way, uh, we're over 20. Bigger, huge, huge, massive resistance around 25. So let's go ahead, mark that. Not just do we have the 9 EMA um, coming in, but we have big, big, big time resistance here. So be careful trading this one. I would argue over 26 or near 26. I think we still have room to run on IMVT. Let's let's do some research here. What this ticker has got in store for us. Show me the news, IMVT. Okay, so this ticker, blang blang kadang. What do you, what are you up to? Right now, gapping around 50% pre-market, 100 and 1.3. 3 billion uh, is kind of a big market cap. I'm not sure how I feel about that. That's a big one. 40 million float, that's pretty nice. Um, well, it has a, has a lawsuit going on. So there's that. more shares available that's means there's a lot of dilution not totally sure why this ticker is ticking are trading higher after Roe Vance Science has said it plans to propose a merger okay so there's a merger potential okay let's go ahead and document that in our watch list which is if you're watching this on post playback it's in the first pin comment I was in the watch list um so today's march 8th 8th the news is ro ivent revivant ivan i don't know if i'm saying that right sciences plans to propose a merger plans to propose some pretty exciting stuff. It's not every day that someone announces that they plan to propose. <laughs> All right, well, I, I like this one so far. Obviously, you can really see here on the four hour how critical this 22 zone is. 22, seven, maybe, arguably. Either way down here, it's more like 21, five. Uh, but if we can break above this, I think we got some clear upside from there. Uh, it's about a 14% run, about an 8% run to the next resistance. We got 13% downside before major support comes in. So uh, IMVT, ANCN, eyes, those are clearly um, our lead gappers, I would argue. Do you think I should update my video already to the lead gappers? What do you guys think? Do you have any thoughts on that? I feel like usually I've been waiting lately for the end of the stream, but we typically know what the lead gappers are before the market opens. So I, I don't know. I don't know if you guys even really care which way I do it, but uh, right now the title says Monday and then after the stream, I update which tickers <clears throat> are the lead gappers so if you guys have any feedback there I'd... Nick says update it now <laughs> anyone else feeling some serious peer pressure right now I'm feeling it this peer pressure is next level so we got ANCN we got IMVT I'll do it today and see what happens let's not I hopefully I don't confuse too many people there's probably gonna be people wondering where the heck is Monday Top Gainers? I don't see it anywhere on the channel. So if that happens, just everyone remember it was Nick's fault. <laughs> just kidding, Nick. <laughs> All right, well, I went ahead and updated it.
That's true. Um, I did do it before. I'm not even really sure why I stopped. I think, I think sometimes I just try to switch things up, see what's more comfortable. MVT just took a nice little poop. All right, guys. I eyes is way back in the play. Why while A and C N is pretty much back to those lows. We got another kind of 18 minutes before the market opens. The market should be pretty green today with that stimulus package going through. Well, the Senate made some amendments, and now it's back to the House. But most likely, with a Democratic majority and passing the Senate, it's going to pass the House, go back to the Senate, and then Biden's going to stamp of approval. I, I don't see it really taking too long. I don't see what they would really change on it again. But... Uh, it's, it sounds pretty good. I mean, $1,400 is going to go through flat. $15 minimum wage by 2025 was cut out, obviously. There's a lot of child tax credit benefits, um, like deductibles moved from 2000 to 3000 uh, Unemployment benefits as well. Uh, it sounds good. You know, the Democrats are pretty stoked, while the Republicans are pretty much saying it, it includes a lot of other stuff um, that, you know, is a bit unnecessary. But, yeah. Obviously, that's they kind of have to say that, I suppose. <laughs> oh man, Danny, we have all been there. We have all been there. Morning, Corey. Also, guys, once the market opens, I'm going to be extra focused on the charts. Uh, you know, if it gets really dry, I'll keep checking the chat. But um, between market open and 1030, so pretty much the next 60 minutes after the market opens, I want to be a bit more focused on the um, on the charts. Even if I'm not necessarily trading, sometimes I got to stare at the order flow um, to identify a trade. And once the market opens, I've, I've noticed that's what I'm really not doing as opposed to pre-market. Pre I'm like just staring at the order flow sometimes just... Or like, you know, checking out patterns, thinking, 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 and then, you know, identify a trade. Sometimes when the market opens, I get kind of distracted lately, which is also fine. I mean, TOS has also been really buggy, so it's not necessarily, the, you know, you want to be trading the market open on TOS anyway. Now I just distracted myself. What was I doing? Oh, yeah, let's quickly run through the news here just really fast, see if I'm missing anything else. Um, I think honestly the um, the bill was was pretty big. You guys can obviously read or hear about Harry and Meghan. If you have some free time, C CEO Ol agrees to pay more for U.S. forces stationed in South Korea. Violence continues in Myanmar. This is kind of huge news. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this. I'm sure it's going to blow up. Switzerland approves ban on face coverings in the public. Um, stop extremism, uh, it says right there. And this is also interesting. Switzerland joined several European countries that have implemented a ban on facial coverings, including France, Denmark, and the Netherlands. The Netherlands and Austria. I actually didn't know so many different places. I knew about France. I definitely didn't know about Denmark and Netherlands. And Austria, Austria, you know, definitely makes sense in my eyes. Uh, they're a bit more conservative over there, the ban. But this was a very tight vote, 51%, so interesting. That, that's definitely um, a big deal. Andrew Kumo still uh, holding on there. There's the sell-off by eyes. I really don't like trading those, you know, 15 minutes before pre-market opens. I just, weird things happen. Uh, weird things happen. This is huge. Did you guys see GE? Guys, we should have just won YOLO on GE and just held it because this was actually, you know, would have been one of our better um, trades. It actually still is one of our better swing trades. Um, from 6 to 10. That was beautiful. Um, you guys probably remember we actually ended up holding this one for quite some time here. Uh, and then it had this beautiful uptrend. We had a perfect sell. My goal was always to rebuy it, 
but I always thought it was gonna crack further down to low nines. That was kind of my goal around here. It never did. It held this area so well and went up another 40%. So man, oh man, I definitely, you know, didn't get aggressive enough on this one, GE. Um, so they're uh, close, to, close to striking a deal, more than $30 billion to combat, combined its aircraft leasing unit with Ireland's A air ca um, cap, reports Wall Street Journal. Um, great catalyst there. I was always a big fan of GE. I felt like they were so sold off. I, th I felt like they were totally undervalued. Um, so, yeah, I'm still stoked about this trade, but, uh, you know, I guess the upside, it wasn't as great anymore. I felt like, you know, the upside at this point was like 10%. We were, you know, possible sell off 10%. It was like a one to one in my eyes. And then I, I thought we had better opportunity elsewhere, which we have had some good opportunity. But, yeah, I mean, that was a nice one. Shamath sold two hundred and thirteen million dollars worth of shares of Virgin Galactic. Uh, let's go to let's go to Virgin Galactic SPCE. Wow, wow, wow! This ticker went freaking down sixty percent. Oh my lord, baby Jesus! Honestly, I would I if I had shares uh, funds available in my swing portfolio, I think I would go long space. And I like space as a as a company. I like space as a team. I think I might actually throw it into my investment portfolio in these prices, see how much we can accumulate. Last time we were chilling and like had a big 60% sell off. Well, this is even more than 60%, but um, this might be a great time to start accumulating, see if we get in one of these other phases again, and then hold it for a year or two in the investment portfolio uh, where I'm super comfortable or where I plan to hold anything over a year at least. Uh, what's going on with Vinmo? V I N O, Vino. Oh, nothing. Okay, just yeah, no, no uh, volume there. Okay, I got distracted. Danny's calling a one four eight seven thousand dollar day for me. Yeah, I, I got a, if got a almost a fifteen hundred dollar day, I'd be stoked, man. Um, <laughs> I guess I thank you. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'm I'm definitely a bit of ways away from that in pre market. I'm only up three twenty seven. Oh God, Corey, you giving me a freaking heart attack just reading that. Corey said restarted my TOS, now it's not updating. Ooh, talk about stress sweats. Mill millions are still unemployed. Uh, let's see. Check F. Yeah, Ford's had a nice little march back to the up. Ford was also totally, uh, totally down and really suppressed. I didn't know too much about Ford, so I couldn't really comment on it. But yeah, this sell-off was a little bit unreasonable. Uh, I never actually ended up trading it. I was always looking at other companies, but uh, yeah, great rebound on Ford for sure. It's also kind of in this place where you want to think, you know, is it getting a bit extended here? I mean, it's pretty much had a nonstop rally. So, I mean, you do want to kind of think about that. If we break past this area, I would assume we'd run to 15 or so. So, so Andrew Cuomo said he wouldn't resign following multiple allegations of sexual harassment calls for members of his own party to step down. <laughs> That's a pretty boss move. I'm not going to step down, but you guys should. Um... He's basically uh, saying, I was reading a little bit about it, that, you know, it's it's the opposite party uh, or um, political rival kind of playing this spiel out. But I don't know too much about that story. British students are returning to school today. Global shipping industry right now in a word chaotic. I didn't read about that one yet. Look at this. Jeff Bezos' ex-wife, Mackenzie Scott, has married a Seattle science teacher who has pledged to help donate most of their wealth to charity. Well, that's probably a good thing. Did you guys see the pretty savage picture of uh, Mackenzie Scott, best investor? in Amazon it's <laughs> um, it's a meme I don't even know if there's time to be sharing this right now uh, let me see here <laughs> it was like Amazon chart uh, chart 
and it was like when they married and when they got a divorce and it was like perfect low perfect high of amazon chart uh s stock chart i don't know if i can find it it was i got a quite a good chuckle out of that as awful as it is anyway it's not super important but i did think about it Got another seven minutes here before the market opens and CN is still selling off. Eyes is definitely having issues right now. What I don't like about Eyes at the moment is we just had a very clear failed breakout here. We had a retest of 9.5 and did not hold it. What I would kind of expect is uh, um, maybe a test near the lows, either before the market opens or at the market open, and then a third test at 9.5. Um, and that's gonna be a make it or break it test. So that's let's see what happens. Anything's possible, but it's always good to have a plan in your head and you can constantly re readjust it. Um, oh my God, Hillian, I haven't looked at HYLN uh, since we sold it. I was so happy to get out of this company. Oh, no wonder why. It looked like it was a good thing we got out of this one. Uh, we were holding this one, you guys remember, probably for, for quite some time. Um, we actually had a great entry on it, but then for pretty much uh a month and a half we were holding this one and then i missed this first spike to the upside i always wanted to sell over 20. we got this second day attempt and then i was like i am not missing this again we had a little bit of spike to the upside and i just freaking smacked the ask i probably even smacked the bid i didn't want to stick around any longer i'm not even really sure it was a while ago um overall our swing trades uh they have been recovering <laughs> to say the least uh or to say the best honestly like yeah to say the best they were down about five thousand our swing trade portfolio which was getting around 15 percent of my swing trade portfolio um it's about a thirty thousand uh, dollar swing trade portfolio um and we're fully allocated so now we're down um you know around seven percent maybe you know, maybe like eight percent but it's it's definitely gotten better so everything still looks good uh, i was going through the positions over the weekend and i pretty much came to the uh, consensus that you know if i could i'd be buying more um so really i'm just like a little bit down because i can't buy more um, with the swing trade portfolio so um other than that like I'm not gonna be over managing that account. GOV GOEV stock is is an interesting one. Uh, I would have also probably considered buying this one near the low. We had just about a perfect swing trade or a perfect entry here, uh, but then I never ended up selling it. It was breaking below the pennant pattern, so I ended up selling it. My goal was to rebuy, uh, but we don't have any more funds available. My alert ticker went off, so technically I am long GOEV um wherever it is but i only have one share long a few tickers are like that because we didn't get our full allocations because we don't have funds available all right four minutes here before the market opens i feel like i should grab a water or something but all right you know i'm gonna i'm gonna grab a water and uh, i'll be right back
another two minutes for this Monday open. IMVT had a bit of a sell off again. On the four hour, it actually looked like a pretty clean setup on the uh, on the five minute though. It's a little bit shady. There goes eyes popping up. Ooh, MYT, a new ticker today, making some moves. What's it looking like? Fast spike here with pretty much very light volume. There's a catalyst, there must be a catalyst. Big, big popping instantly to bigger resistance here. It's gonna hit a lot of limit orders. Well, eyes looks like it held. Got another minute here before the market opens. All right. I got eyes on my main screen, and I'm going to put uh, A and C in on my second screen. A and C in could be a great dip buy at one point. Obviously, for a little bit bigger support even four or five we're quite a ways away from that so i'm not sure how much more it's going to sell off good luck everyone though time of force today let's get the uh let's get the ball rolling here it's common collected but let's see what we can squeeze out of it. another 17 seconds here and for anyone that's new don't forget to check out the connect link here we go. Good luck, guys. And CN having issues. A A E Y E S. This is the spike here back to nine five. We were slightly talking about it earlier. I was thinking we might sell off a little bit first, but we didn't. So maybe the spike is a bit premature. We'll see how it holds up. I, I'm not going to be buying here though. Nasdaq down 17.17. It's not too bad. VIX up. Bitcoin up. There goes ANC and as well. So I'm, you know, I was thinking ANC and could be a little bit more interesting here. I'm just, I'm practicing the art of not clicking anything right now. I feel like. I'd just rather sit back and watch right now before I see a clear setup. Let's quickly change this to the day chart. Yeah, I mean this is this is the all telling story right here, right? We just broke past yesterday's high. We got next resistance at eleven. I mean EYES is the lead gapper right now. It was traded quite thickly pre market though. Bigger market cap now at 250 million. It was literally at 30 million market cap on uh, Friday morning. Nice move there, watching ANCN, watching eyes. Wow, that move was much stronger than I expected, but look at the volume there. It's it's strong. So I like what I'm seeing. Five minute is looking strong. Obviously, we're really close to that bigger support. I mean, bigger resistance here at 11. And CN selling off. I just want to keep an eye on this one. Probably around five. I think I'd be a little bit more inclined. Nice pullback there on eyes. 950. Try to get an entry there at 21. Got an entry there at 21. Try to take some profits, but I was not able to get them. 
Still selling off this ticker. I'm going to close out there for a scratch, which sucks. Um, but it is what it is. It was a quick move. I didn't get it, and I felt like there was a high chance of it flushing again. So sloppy trade, but uh, I'd rather I'd rather close for a scratch than be stuck in a second flush here, which I felt like there was a high chance. So let's see what happens. It's unfortunate we didn't get out when it hit 30. That that was obviously my goal. My entry just wasn't that hot, so that was a bit of a problem. Using hotkeys right now for entries and exits a lot of the time. Yeah, if I just held a little bit longer, but overall my entry was just never really that good. We're trading with about $10,000 here per, per trade. Don't forget to drop a like, guys, if you appreciate the content. Um, and yeah, consider subscribing if you're new. Nice, EYES popping there back at 945. Okay, there we go. So yeah, did I sell too early? Clearly, but you know, it looked like it could flush again. I'm always very weary about buying into big dips like that. Uh, so I don't regret selling because in the long run, that's how I avoid um, getting stuck in those. And sometimes I do get stuck in, you know, big sell-offs, but. Yeah, see, now we, we, we'd end up being down like $400 right now if we kept on holding it. But, yeah, I, I would definitely would have probably closed out on that green candle. I'm watching ANCN still on my second screen, in case you guys are wondering. interesting zone here I'm not crazy about going long eyes I feel like eyes has a lot of risk at the moment while ANCN even though it's selling off might give us a better risk reward entry so that's kind of what I'm thinking We've got eyes IMVT you know it's kind of on a downwards trend ANCN round five OPGN kind of interesting as well it's really not looking at this one. Broke above two six. Might run to three. Keep an eye on it, guys. This is this is an interesting ticker here. Twenty seven shares outstanding. Million shares outstanding. Announced that they have news. Diagnosis of bacterial co-infections at ICU. Is a carrying patient code of pneumonia. Sounds really good. So okay, I'm watching OPGN. Eyes, M, C, N. Watching A, M, C, N at this possible break of five. Long A, M, C, N at five. Long at 9495 roughly, 2,000 shares. Looking for a move back to 9 EMA, big resistance around 18. All right, taking profits there at 11. Could keep, could be a red to green move, but five minute has a lot of sell volume. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight red five minute candles in a row. So let's be careful. Okay, it goes to 14 so far. So yeah, I sold too soon, but whatever. I always do, I'm used to it. <laughs> it's not, not my strategy to sell at the perfect high or low. Nice little bounce there, EYES, OPGN. 
OPGN's a whacker. Oh my lord. Oh, I would have loved trading this one, but I had to focus on the other ticker. I'm not very astute at trading two tickers at once. It's a bit of my lack. Uh, appreciate it, guys. Don't forget to drop, drop your support by just dropping the uh, like button and... Uh, Easiest way to support the channel. Subscribe if you're new. I'd love to love to see uh, some new faces here again. OPGN, look at this one popping two seven. This could be good. And CN, I definitely definitely sold too soon, but that's fine. I'm not worried about it. I'm just thinking, you know, can there be a setup here um, that's worth trading again? Um, possibly. I love that crack of five with the light sell volume. I love that. That was really good. Do some homework here on OPGM with that 50 million market cap, tiny. Right now, much bigger. Uh, so pre-market, it was up. I don't know what it was up actually pre-market. What was OPGM doing pre-market? It was kind of up only 13%. That's why it wasn't really on my watch list. Let's see what kind of entry we get. Seven six could be a good zone. <laughs> Big sellers right there, just kind of slamming the price right now. <sighs> Possible entry below two eight. Might need to get an early entry on it. I don't know. It's hard to say. Third pullback potential though. I need to get an Xbox controller or something like that for hook it up to TD Ameritrade. I was actually doing some research on that this weekend. Small size here at 76. A lot of buyers though. I'm not sure if it's gonna get really push it much lower. Let's keep watching it though. Small size here, really small size on my end. I'm gonna take profits there. I would have liked to buy back at a lower price. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get that. And CN's moving guys again. I don't know if you guys are watching it. Oh, oh, oh my God. Beautiful move there, great pullback. That's the one I was looking for, but I snoozed through it. And CN guys. Uh, Green on the day, pop, perfect red to green move. Solid, solid move. Still watching OPGN. Eyes is uh, Eyes is making nice moves as well. Eyes is halted here. It's gonna open up. Oh yeah, uh, 30, 34.50. Long. OPGN, small size. Well, not a super small size. It's not like a super big size. I'm looking for that break over 2.8. If we can get a move over 2.8. Struggling though. A 5% possible upside. No, decent sellers though. Looking for that one more pop here. I'm not sure if we're gonna get it. Oh, 
All right, I'm out of this position. I didn't like that it took so long to break out. That's why I decided to close and not hold for a move past 2.8, really. Or like a big move past 2.8. This could be a buyback zone on OPGN. Oh! 287! Choppy little chopsticks here, but... Freaking, freaking work. I, I sold too soon. Oh well, it was it was it was an extended pullback, and those sometimes make me nervous because sometimes you get a one pop to the upside, and then whack a freaking giant flush to the downside. So I was just I was not really trying to be part of that. Um, ANCN really interesting here, but VWAP we've talked about it pre market huge resistance at VWAP, so just be careful on it. Let's go back to OPGN. This is this is exactly what I just talked about. Okay, this one actually ended up being a green a second green uh, candle, but sometimes I see this and then you know that whack is a lot stronger than I would expect. It's not always the case, but I has, I somehow had a bit of a feeling just because I've seen this uh, pattern play out so many times. But I don't know, it ended up kind of working here. Nine forty four a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so that means eyes is about to open up. Let's go to let's go to eyes in like twenty seconds. Don't forget, guys, I can do more Q&As after 10.30 or after I say I'm done trading, which is usually latest at 10.30 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Just want to let everyone know if you guys are asking questions, I need to be focused right now on the charts. OPGN making making a potential more entry. I, I don't know. I'm having a hard time thinking about it right now. Let's go back to eyes, which is going to open up here. Good luck, everyone, trading eyes. Possible break over 11. Let's watch it. Quick pullback. Boom! Move to 11. Everyone's looking at that 18% dip here. Everyone's looking at that, you know, huge flush to the left. We have room to run without major resistance till 13. So I think eyes right now is a great play. 13 uh, million float, second green day on eyes. Also, ANCN is making a perfect flag pattern right now. So that's another ticker worth considering. It's a lot of opportunity right now. Eyes is by far usually or the best lead gapper I think we're seeing. Wow, look at that move. Congrats to anyone that bought that first pullback right after it opened up. I think that was that was a really smart and good move. Decent risk reward. Uh, I definitely snoozed through it. I think I'd be call, probably taking my profits. That's a 16% run right now. Home run trade to anyone that was entering around 10.5. 20 plus percent. Aye, aye, aye. Big congrats, guys. Honestly, that... Whoever traded that one snagged the golden goose. 11.7. All right, well, I'm just being a nervous Nancy right now. I'm not trading it. I'm just um, being undecisive, and I shoulda, coulda, woulda. Uh, OPGN, ooh, look at this one. It's really having that tough time around three, which totally makes sense. Look at the daily chart. Three was a pivotal zone, so it's not it's not really able to break back above three. We might see a little bit more consolidation here, uh, but at the moment, this one's right now below the 9 EMA. Could be on the backside move, but we'll see. It's still over VWAP, so it technically isn't still an uptrend. Uh, once it sells, it sells, you know? That's why I was so nervous on OPGN. Let's see if it has a second flush. Remember on eyes, I was really nervous about that. I sold right away because I was worried about a second flush. So this one looks like the second red candle is not that bad, but still enough to make, you know, another three or four percent loss on your on your holdings. So it's not exactly ideal either. Eyes is freaking rocketing. Uh, a and CN could be a possible entry closing in on a possible double bottom. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Nice flag pattern here on eyes. 
I'd watch out. This is an extended flag pattern. I'm not super optimistic it's going to make it that move over 12.7 just yet. I don't know. Sometimes these strong tickers are, are really... Um, I always underestimate them. Well, okay, there it goes to 12.95 already, so I was already wrong. I would have not traded that one, but looks like it would have been the right decision, actually. <laughs> I, I probably could have, should have, just would have held eyes, right? And actually would have been a great, great trade. You don't know till you know. All right, I think we had the nice open rush. Now it's a little bit getting towards finding good risk reward technical setups. My problem with eyes, and which always has been my problem with eyes, especially on Friday trading and why I missed so many moves, is the fact that this ticker flushes. And I just got too nervous trading this ticker. We set, we seen multiple flushes around 20% on this one. Um, look at this one here. This is just absolutely devastating. I've gotten chopped out uh, even on like right here. This was a flush I entered and then I chopped out on you know, at least a decent bounce. Let's keep an eye on it because if it moves over 13, this could definitely still, this, I mean, next level is around 15. I have 14.5 mapped out, but 15 is definitely a pivot zone as well. So let's just go ahead and mark that. Let's go back to the weekly chart here. Zoom in a little bit. 17.8 worth considering 19 5 17 I'm kind of getting my chart extremely cluttered right now but is this already the break here I mean this is a what looks to be a bit of an ABC pattern, but if we had one second interval, it would be a little bit more clear. One billion dollars right now on eyes, uh, dollar volume. That's really nice. Oh, and see, uh, OPGN having some big issues right now, trending to the downside. I'd be, I'd be careful here. Might have a nice pop back above 2.7, but... Definitely worth just being a little bit weary on. IMVT, talk about a disappointment. Um, down now, 14% since the open. Possible bounce zone around 16. I don't know. Yeah, eyes is, eyes is the one on play, uh, in play, so. The one I'm too conservative on is, is really the one ripping here. I gotta work on my aggression a little bit with day trading these gappers, but it's fine. You know, I had a really good week last week, even though we left a lot of money on the, uh, the table. And, you know, as long as I'm making incremental improvements week by week, can't really complain about missing profits. Nine fifty one. What are we gonna get? Wow, instantly ripping here to the 14s. Next stop is at 15. I mean, it's it's hitting all the levels I mapped out that I was thinking, okay, we might see him today, but I wasn't expecting all of it right before 10. 
I've only traded eyes once so far after the market opened. Most of my focus was uh, on OPGN. ANCN really didn't pull back that much from pre-market highs, so I or from the open, so I probably should have been a bit more uh, aggressive on it on, on, in terms of holding. Changing my quantity of shares to 300, that'd be pretty much a third of my full size. So I'd probably try to go in with about 900 shares if I did trade it. But start with smaller size and just kind of manage it there. What a runner, 954. We might be entering the backside soon, but. I've been way too pessimistic on eyes. So. ANC and trying to move back above VWAP. Bit of a flush here on eyes. Thirteen percent. Anything below seventy nine would actually probably be long there. Looking for a little bit more. Nice. Snack there on the bounce. I kind of tripped over myself there. I just didn't get didn't get the. Uh, well, whatever. I'm happy. Yeah, first trade was at 74 when it should have been below 70, but whatever. Nice little bounce there. It was a 11% bounce. I was not expecting a move like that. You can see I was taking profits at 13. Most of my sells were at 13. I did one sell at 13.9. I didn't think we would run to 13.6 at all. I thought we were gonna maybe go to like 13.30 or something like that. That was a bigger flush. I learned from this flush that I didn't wanna buy on the red candle. I was gonna buy the second red candle. That's why I traded that one. ANCN guys, above VWAP. Are you guys watching this one? It looks kind of tasty. I'm gonna keep an eye on it on my second screen. Big resistance on ANCN at 6.30, like massive resistance. So just definitely uh, keep that in the watch book. I might trade ANCN really soon here. I don't know where, but I would like to see one more pullback towards 70s almost 10 o'clock ANC and just made a doji candle and now it's trending back to the upside technically a trend after doji's there's continuation in that direction Um, yeah, so we're seeing it right now. I, I, if I, when I saw that trend happening, I should have jumped on it right away. But, you know, I, I'm just not a big fan of doing that. Trading is a lot of times just thinking about, you know, how do I make trading work for me? How do I, like, how do I adjust it to my personality? Because if you try to trade like somebody else, there's going to be a giant, um, 
I don't know, divergence of, of returns, I think. Just uh, it's, it's hard trading someone else's style because it's going to come very unnatural. EYE's here holds it to the downside. <whistles> Scary stuff. So it should be a five-minute hold. Let's see if uh, there's any more information on this one. Let's go to NASDAQ holds quickly. So EYE, LUDP, this is a 15-minute hold, volatility hold. I wish they put the resumption time like here or something. Yeah, OPGN. I mean, uh, ANCN, I mean, this this ticker is, is whacking. I just wish it would had a catalyst. Um, huge resistance around 7.5, so don't forget that. Let's, let's keep a focus on ANCN, though, for now. It's clearly going in the right direction. Come on, baby. I wanna see you pop. Yeah, I mean, freaking nice ticker, honestly. Very nice. You got my hotkeys locked and loaded. I'm thinking. I mean, we have room to run to 7.5. This is a massive five-minute breakout. One minute, it's definitely extended. We have resistance here on the daily. We had a high at 6.65, which we are over. New minutes starting in 10 seconds. NASDAQ still selling off today, so that's probably not good for my swing portfolio. Um, well, swing portfolios pretty much break even on the day. Um Oh, just missed that entry by freaking, I don't know, a little bit more than, I guess I can't be that upset. Ten o'clock, guys. Another sell-off here. Fifteen more seconds for a new minute. Uh, are we gonna break six five? I don't know if we're gonna break six five, but if we do, I'm gonna get ready for it. I'm watching ANCN right now possible break of 6.5 to the downside making a no nah, I don't know the 5 minute candle really did kind of formulate some support already this is premature here yeah I was I was I was just one hint too conservative there on that one Starter size below six five. Oh boy, oh boy, five three. It's gonna be a red candle. It's hard to say. It's a lot of sell volume. Move down my order here. Fifty one hold it. Dang it, didn't get my full size. All right, long, full size. Where's it gonna go, where's it gonna go, where's it gonna go? 
Come on, break 57. Nope, didn't do it. Well, 650 is getting chipped. I want to see this really get ripped through. There's a good chance it will. It's unfortunate. Definitely have my full size here. Just gonna buy a little bit more just to keep it, kind of make it easier to close. I hate tripping over myself when I'm trying to close a trade. I think there's a chance we're gonna run over five, but you just you know you want to kind of manage expectations here. Never become too convinced about any one trade, and this ticker is clearly having issues here, so. Look at that. Huge sellers there. Got to watch out. This is not looking good. Still big sellers. 30. I might have to close this one. Let's see what happens. Just kind of giving a little bit more time. I should... Nope. Dang. Watching it, watching, 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 watching. I gotta stop at 20. Almost stopped out there. You guys saw it. I mean, I literally. I'm gonna give it one more attempt here. I'm not sure. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. I think I, did I have a loss on that one? I have no idea. Oh, that was a stressful trade. That was so stressful. I, 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 I had two, three hundred dollars in the bank. And I was like, here we go. I was looking for, I wasn't trying to get greedy. I was, I was literally... And I was, it was not even really in a base hit territory. So I was like, okay, we might retest here 71. Maybe we're going to have like a double top. So that's, I was thinking I'm going to sell before a double top, you know, and you know, you know, slippery fingers here ends up freaking closing right before, um, the actual move higher. So shame on me. Um, oh, that's so painful. Yeah. So I, I, I would have been up, you know, 400 right here. So it is what it is, whatever. It is what it is, and it ain't what it ain't. Uh, yeah, eyes. There's definitely flax uh, set up here, but man, this flushy washy has always got me on freaking mad FOMO level. Uh, oh, here we go. This is why I closed out on ANCN, guys. You might be wondering, Alex, why did you finally close out once it looked like it was moving back to the upside? Because you just never know. Sometimes you get that one tick to you of the upside, and you're like, oh, yeah, baby, I'm going green. And then whack, down 6 7%. Um, so my thesis was wrong. My original trade was over here. All of this, everything that pretty much happened after 10.04 was me managing my trade, managing my risk, and just closing for as little loss as possible. It looks like I even closed for a potential small profit here. I really don't know. It looks like I closed between 42 and 45. I entered between 44. Yeah, so it might have been a small profit. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't matter. Either way, that, that trade was a scratch. Um, and I hope you understand why. Because this whole area, it was no longer the original trade. It was pretty much hoping and praying at that point if I kept holding. Um, I didn't. I don't like hoping, so I said, you know what, this trade it was wrong. 
I, I didn't take my profits quick enough. Uh, so I'm going to own up to my mistake. and I'm just going to close it. Uh, yeah. Is what it is. I'm, if anything, I'm lucky because I didn't close at 400. And you guys saw my stop order. It was literally right there. I almost got stopped out. I mean, n like, it would have took a freaking a breeze that moved a feather to, to stop me out. So if anything, I'm thankful how that trade turned out. Um, OPGN, second here, high. I'd be so worried about a flush. One, because I'm always worried about a flush. But two, because we see a flush here on the left. So just be careful of that. Be very mindful of that. Three, five, possible upside, though. Right now, we're holding the threes. Uh, 6,000. I would, yeah. Nine six getting chip. Anything in the mid eights to me would be um, a potential dip buy. I could be asking for too much. Nine ten almost. At least another 20 minutes here. Don't forget, guys, after I'm done day trading, we're going to do a little bit of a you know, Q&A, &A, review the swing trades. Um, so just you know, after 1030. Or whenever I say I'm done day trading, which could be now. You just never know. Um, I want to be trading when it's hot. Uh, and after 1030, things do tend to die. Although lately, we've been having some pretty amazing moves, like literally right after we end the stream, uh, which is sometimes a bit stressful. But uh, I've you know I started looking at the charts at 7. I actually started looking at the charts before 7, um, but I started trading at 7. So by the time it's, you know, 10, 30, 11, I'm, I'm going cross-eyed, you know. So I I don't even care if I miss something because it's more chances I would have made a mistake. I kind of miss the chat room a little bit. Uh, I love the chat room. If, if it was really slow, I would be occasionally checking it for sure. But um, I just, I need to be focused here because on Friday I missed a lot of moves and I think it's just because I was, I was not focused. ANC and popping back to the upside here. What are we going to get? What are we going to get boys? Five minute. I mean, there's a setup here on the five minute for sure. ANC and deck definitely is our, you know, one of our better tickers right here. Double top looking like it's about to form. Watching ANCN. I'm going to do starter size here. See if we can muster up a little bit more courage to trade this one. Long, another size there. Small trade overall. I'm looking for that continuation at least around to a double top. Oops, doesn't look good. Well, being cautious was one right decision I had. This doesn't look good at all. Yeah, bad, 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 bad. Close out. I'm taking a big loss on that one. Um, I'll tell you why, because you get stuck in a flush like that Sometimes there's really bad news. Uh, that was unexpected. I took a $600 loss on that one. So that was nasty right there. You want to be really careful. See, this this would have had me freaking out. I'd be down like an eight dollars $900 loss here. So I didn't want to jump on that bandwagon. So yeah, I was I was up around $1,500 just now. And now I'm back to nine twenty five. dollars So um, I don't care. It's totally part of the game red trades are totally normal but you could see how fast that goes i had a feeling there was something shady about this 
Um, so I already decided to not get too aggressive um, and wait for a little bit more of a sell-off. And the easiest way to manage your risk on a setup you're not super stoked about is um, trading small size. I didn't trade super small size, um, but my first entry you know, was a little bit smaller. Um, in the end, actually now I realize I went up to 1,600 shares. So okay, yeah, I, I didn't really trade small size there. Um, that was about a $9,500 position size. Either way, I closed at 97. So, <laughs> you know, happy. You know, look at this thing, still selling off. So you wanna be very, very mindful of when tickers stop working. EYES, is it EYES halted? It looks like it's halted. Yeah, it's halted. It's gonna open up at 16. So let's keep watching that one. OPGN also, a little dipski here. We were talking about this one possibly in the 80s. Remember? I don't know if you guys remember that. Here we go, OPGN, possible that second, no, no, it's holding. Although the balance here in the first 30 seconds is fairly weak. Um, okay, now it goes, boom, there it's going, yeah. I was originally thinking, you know, I would like to buy this, but in the 80s, and we got to like, what, 90? Yeah, so a little bit too conservative there on my end. Okay, ANCN popping back to the upside. Still, I'm not really regretting where I sold it, uh, roughly at 97 flat. Um, yeah, I, I could have I could have walked away with a better profit. I think what I should have done on this one was trade slightly smaller size. I actually only want to enter with 13, another 300 shares. You saw my double 300 orders. They both got filled like that. I, I would have canceled one. I, I know it for a fact because that's the first thing that was on my mind um, when both trades were on the on the on the ladder. I was like, mm, I should probably cancel one, um, but. Yeah, it all happened pretty fast. It all happened so fast. I don't remember. Uh, OPGN, great bounce there. Mm, I think my last trade of the day being red is a bit unfortunate, but okay, never mind. OPGN's back up. I was just about to say it just, everything just started looking really dry. And once things start looking dry, I, I want to throw in the towel. But okay, OPGN is still in play. OPGN has a very sloppy five-minute chart. We are big resistance at three four. We're at three two right now. It's not the cleanest setup. She ain't the prettiest, but that's what's good about her. Yeah, there, there she goes. There goes old Betsy, cranking forward. It's definitely a massive fake out OPGN had. A lot of sellers here. I don't like the fact that we're looking literally at a five minute just failed breakout wick sketch central zone here. I was thinking about or entering here at 13, but I don't know. I don't know. What can I do? Give me a sign, it's up to you. Small size at 
All right, this ticker is geeking me out. I'm closing. 307, 06. Oh, I could have re entered. I closed at 12. It's back at 12. You see how antsy I am after taking a bigger loss? I also, after a big loss though, I always say you want to take a base hit to get back in the groove. Uh, so that's that was a big reason I closed as well. I just kind of wish I closed it earlier and then ended up rebuying. Either, I don't know. What, what kind of person? That was like a 2% pop. Nice little. Probably at least expect it. All right. EYES. Look at that support on EYES. Is anyone trading this one? Because I'm a little bit ashamed of myself. I didn't trade that support on EYES. Oh. Well, I'll tell you why. It's because it got halted. That's actually kind of. Whoa! What just happened? Did you guys see that? My whole screen just turned off for a second. Holy bananas. OPGN. OPGN is going full sketch fest mode here. Trying to get the... Uh, trying to lure you in. It's showing a little bit of... Showing a little bit of skin. It's like, ooh, look at me. I look so good. Trade me. And then... <laughs> whack. I don't know, guys. What do you think? Should we call it? It's 1019. Mm, there's definitely opportunity, though, in the air. I smell it. Uh, ANCN. ANCN's moving back to VWAP after a big five-minute sell-off. We might see a pretty good move. We got 3% upside here. And it's second flush. 9% downside. No, it's definitely not a good trade. Definitely do not do not stick your toes in the water. It is lava. I don't know, I could be wrong. It it could be could be good. Technically, this is a 5-minute doji candle with a potential 5-minute breakout over 609. So, it might have an attempt even if it's failed, it might still be might still work. I don't know. I, I I'm not going to do it myself. Let's see what happens. Come on, give us resolution. We're freaking out here. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. All right, you know what? I'm just going to put an alert. If, if my alert goes off, it means Betsy was taken behind the barn. All right, EYES. Let's check out this one again. Yeah, great bottom bounce. E Honestly, EYES could be back in play. I feel like I'm going to end the stream, and then EYES is going to have again one of its legendary runs and I'm just gonna look at it and later in the day and a little tear is gonna come out of my eye oh OPGN what no OPGN is a good looking mover right now it's 2120 My problem with OPGN, well, I don't want to repeat myself, but it's the flushes. We, we've seen this one over and over again. Do dirty things to people. Oh, look at that move down there. Actually, it could be a great entry. Let's let's see what happens on the first 10 seconds of the new candle. And, okay, instantly recovered. I probably would have sold. 3-4 is big resistance. I mean, look at this resistance here. The, if it doesn't flush... On a f if it breaks three four, and like if it's not a fake out, I would I would honestly be impressed. So, all right, well this one held. Ooh, I don't know what to do. Do I still want to trade? Probably. I'm up a thousand. I gave back six hundred on that last or two trades ago. A and C N breaking back up. I think I might wrap it. Yep. ANCN and popping. I'm too nervous that ANC is going to flush. I don't think I want to give back profits right now. Yeah, I think I'm thinking too much about things I shouldn't be thinking about. So I'm going to call it. All right, guys, that's it. I'm up 1K today, almost exactly. Um, just short of the predictions made in the chat room. Uh, so there it is. All right, guys, let's let me open the chat room again. 
<laughs> I see you guys were singing in here. What is love? Friends over here singing Baby Don't Hurt Me. Uh, Sasa's wondering what's the most profitable ticker today. It's almost the perfect break between OPGN and Eyes. Eyes was definitely the winner today, but we ended up giving back... Oh, no, ANCN was the winner today. We gave back $600 on ANCN. So technically, we would have been 555 across the board. That is rare. It's almost never like that. Usually, I'm up on one ticker, and the other tickers are just scratches. So it would have been a perfect 555 day, but whatever. I gave back some profits at the end. Yep, Bark, we are done with the work day. Uh, 1AP Pro is wondering where we're trading from. We're trading from uh, Montenegro at the moment. Yeah, Danny, you would have been pretty spot on on that one. Uh, I would have been a little bit over the prediction, which would have felt pretty cool. Challenge accepted. Bren's wondering if I'm hiding the chat right now to stay focused. Yeah, a little bit. Um, I figured, you know, we, we do a lot of talking pre-market. We do a lot of talking after 1030 or whenever I'm done. Uh, and, you know, I need to, I've been missing a lot of moves lately. Not, I'm not blaming it on you guys, but I think it's just like, there's a lot going on on my four monitors. And then the chat room gives me kind of an excuse to like turn my head off. I don't know. I tried it out today and I think it, it worked pretty well, but I do feel kind of weird not looking at the chat room. R weekend was great. We, uh, we, uh, did a lot of hiking. Um, I don't know if I have a picture of it. One sec. I got a good picture somewhere in here. Can I take screenshots? I can't move these pictures over. So yeah, we did some hiking. Uh, here is um, actually, in the distance, you can kind of see the ocean. Uh, this is the ocean here. And this is actually uh, Croatia. Is Croatia with a Z or K? Croatia. C. Yeah. Wow. I think I've been spelling it with a K now for a while. Oh, my God. That's so embarrassing. So this is Croatia. Wow. Okay. No points there. But <clears throat> this all is Montenegro um, and we are staying in a village in this area and we are hiking this freaking massive thing here and this this is a lake that connects to the or it's not a lake it's like a sea it goes all up in here in this way and then somewhere it goes back into the ocean here so I hope you guys like my references. But yeah, that's that's what I was doing this weekend, doing some good hiking. Uh... Yeah, so Green Day, can't can't complain. Jonathan just scalped OPGN. 25 cents. Nice. 25 cents move. Look at that breakout. Oh, it looks like I ended the chat or I ended the stream just to, or the trading a little bit too soon. But honestly, I, I don't think I would have, I don't know if I would have traded this one. I think I would have fumbled around. Somehow I probably would have ended up losing money. Uh, nice. Boom. Move to four. Sorry if I distracted you guys just now because that move was, was pretty aggressive. I don't, I don't like you would have had to been glued to the order book. Right now, I'm making a flag pattern. This could be a great setup. I would be nervous, but I'm always nervous. So if I'm nervous, it probably just means get aggressive, honestly.
catching up on the chat here. You guys wrote some... You guys were busy today, huh? Love to see that action. We made um, some changes to the... We're well, not changes to the Discord. I had some new channels. It was interesting stuff. Ooh, OPGN is probably a slamming good entry right now. Here at 365. Well, by the time I said that, it was already back at 370. Oh, there was an opportunity. Even if it doesn't break, it might do a little ABC pattern. Let's let's watch this one. Just to, well, let's just keep it on the radar. <clears throat> is eyes halted? I don't know. I'm not looking at it, but probably no. It's it's moving. It's not halted. It probably was halted. <clears throat> yeah, it was halted. <clears throat> Here it goes, OPGN. I really think this could be an ABC pattern. So A, B, C. Sometimes it pulls back on the D and then it rips. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Oh my lord, yeah, it was a good setup. That's a 7% move. Oh, oh, oh my lord. All right, you know what, next time I'm not gonna stop trading until we're clearly on the backside because this was not on the backside, but I kind of gave up on it. I don't know why, but I did. Uh, Brian, I don't use a cash account. I use a margin account, so my account is over twenty-five thousand dollars. After after your account's over twenty-five thousand dollars, and it's a day trading account, it doesn't really matter what your account size is. Um, I would probably say like don't trade over fifty percent of your account size, just in case. <clears throat> this is day trading, not swing trading, not investing. That's totally different advice. Um, so just keep it keep that in mind. Um, oh, this pullback is a little bit stronger here. It failed here, so this is not looking so good. Not looking so good. But 9 EMA definitely being tested. We have 3.5 as bigger support. This could be a phenomenal entry as well, especially if it breaks 3.5. If it breaks 3.5 and volume flips, this could be a good entry right below 3.5. I don't know if it will happen. That's that's what I would be thinking if I was still trading. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, my average position size right now is around $10,000. Actually, that's not... Is that true? I'll tell you guys if it's true right now. If I go to my stats... Watching 3.5, look at this, 3.55, five, five. cracking 3.53. Three. Oh, 3.52, I think that was, I would think that was the balance. I think here's the, yep, it didn't go, it held that 3.52 like a champ. Let's see what happens again. Oh, you could be scalping left and right on this ticker, even just for like 0. 0.5. It might crack 3.5 though again, let's see, let's watch this one. 9E may coming in as a resistance. Oh Lord, what's he gonna do? I'm out, it held again. Yeah, I, I was cash count at one point. It was freaking stressful. Um, I only do cash count for investment uh, and swing trade at the moment. Otherwise, I'm margin. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, for this month, on the day trading account, uh, our average position size is 9.5. So technically right now I'm at like 10.5% average um, for the month or for the day. So, like I made 10% based on my average position size, like 10.05. So it's a good day. 5% uh, is a good day. 10% is a great day. Anything over 10% is uh, a home run day in my eyes. 10% of my average position size. Um, Anything below 5% is kind of like, you know, scratch, it's okay. Uh, and then obviously anything in the red is a disaster. <laughs> well, not a disaster, but it happens. Um, and 10% uh, down, 10% of my average position size is when I throw in the towel. That's my max stop for the day. Um, I wish the calendar was already up. We're going to have the calendar very soon, guys. Uh so far, no red days for March. Knock on wood. Uh, that's good progress. And our profit uh, margins here are around 30% or, well, not 30, but 40-ish. You know, low 40s, which is good.
Yeah, Robert. That's what I did uh, with a cash count under 25,000. I split my account up to six trades or six uh, if, if like, you know, let's say my account size was, let's say my account size was $6,000 and six trades is obviously $1,000. So that's six trades. So I could do three trades a day. Um, so each trade would be $1,000, right? That's like the really simple kind of math. So that's how I did it. And that way, just like Robert's saying, you're able to trade three times per day and always let the cash settle. Um, it works, but the problem is you put so much emphasis on every single trade that you have a very hard time cutting losses and you have a very hard ta time ba taking base hits. So it's a, it's a strategy that you have to mentally get used to because it's gonna make you freak out um, sometimes. Um, it's gonna give you some serious FOMO and stress. Um, but that's what we were doing for six months and it works for the small count challenge, actually like eight months. Um, it totally worked. Uh, it just, you know, patience was, was a necessity, necessity. Yeah, Robert says it's slow as the F word, but it's great for learning. Yeah, that's what it is. So after six to eight months, we were like, oh my God, like we do not need these training wheels anymore. So I funded the account. I was like, let's just get the show running here a little bit because, you know, it was, it was taking a lot of my time and, you know, I could, you know, as a software company, we could be taking on, you know, projects and clients and I could be making much more money. So I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to keep doing this, then I need to be trading with a 25K account. Um, and for the first two weeks, I decided not to change anything. And for the two weeks, I was very slow. I don't know if you guys remember, that's when I was in Rheinheim, which was West Germany. And we were in a small house there on the countryside, kind of re relaxing. And that was the first week I went to my margin account. And I was like, you know, I'm not gonna do anything different, right? Let's just get used to the fact that I could do unlimited trading. And then boom, 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 with time, um, we became much more consistent, consistent and we were able to grow our account much nicer because we didn't have all those, you know, artificial restraints. That's why I'm so against the pattern day trading rule. Uh, but it, it's a great way to learn with real money without, you know, risking so much. Yeah, Jonathan, great, great points. Yeah, it's it, 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 like at one point you're like, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> but for a few months, you're like, okay, this is good. Like, you know, I'm getting my groove. Eyes, one, two, three lows here. This could be great, great. Honestly, today is a scalping day. The amount of money you could be making scalping today is mind. Today was a good trading day. I didn't even do that well. Like, I feel like I could have walked away with over 2,000 today. It's been a while since we had a $2,000 profit day. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not complaining $1,000 on a Monday. Um, we gave back quite a bit. For sure, we gave back a lot. Today was like a 50% profit margin day. But, you know, it's a good way to start the week. It definitely moves the needle in the right direction. Oh, I, see, I didn't see that um, from Matt, sorry. Uh, yeah, Brian, that's a um, good question. Uh, thanks to Corey. Corey's the one that Corey's the one that brought that to my attention, honestly. So it's it's all Corey. Um, you know what I'll do because I keep forgetting where I saved it. I think I saved it somewhere back here. Here it is. Mixed volume code. This is it. Import this into your trade journal. Uh, and then if you guys want to learn how to import things into your trade journal, mixed volume code, Alex Winkler. I'll share this video as well. Oh, look, I like my own video. I try to I try to remember to do that, but 
I think like 90% of the time I forget. I'm always like, I'm always like, yes! Didn't, didn't forget this time. I don't know if it's shady or not, but I don't even care, honestly. Okay, so what I'm looking for here is, okay, this is where I start talking about it. So I'll, I'll timestamp it here. Oh, you know what? I'm so silly because obviously in the uh, video description, I timestamp everything. I could have just looked for it. Um, mixed volume code right here. Uh, copy link location. And for anyone that asks in the future, you're tough out of luck because you know what you're going to have to do? Actually, you're super in luck because you're gonna have to go to Discord group and then you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add this somewhere. Okay, I'm gonna add it to uh, Brokers TD, add it to TD Mary Trade. Can you guys see that? Is this in the way? Okay, so when you go to when you go to Trade Journal, uh, we got TD Ameritrade. You know what I'm gonna do? An indicator asked for a lot. Oh, look at this! Huge is already chilling in here. Thanks for the thanks for the script. Corey. All right, in the future, I'm gonna point everyone here because, well, it's not exactly a lot of work, but one more thing for you guys. Uh, it's nice, the more people that can contribute here. Um, wait, you know what? I don't know if this video is actually properly timestamped. Let me click on this one more time. Share. Wait, hold on one sec. All right, here we go. Share, start, let me copy this code. Your beard is nice. Oh yeah, I had quite a little beard back then, huh? Um, sorry guys, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm tripping over myself right now. Where did the, where did the Discord go? It literally just disappeared in front of my eyes. There it is. Oh, I must've closed out of it. There it is. Um, wow, look at that. That's a serious beard. Um, volume code. Edit this message. The import script is below plus a timestamp in the video where we implement it into, oh my God, I can't spell right now, into TOS implemented in CUS. Okay, there we go, guys. Now you know where to find all the information. Sweet. Uh, yeah, Robert, I definitely don't have it like that. I feel like I would freak the schnitzel out if my volume was over my price. All you have to do is go to style and then you go to studies wait fake news you go to you go you go to right above the chart there's a gear icon click on the gear icon and you can overlap the volume if you're crazy and it looks like freaking chaos every now and then i see somebody with overlapping volume and part of me dies a little bit so if you want to be responsible for a high blood pressure you know do that but if you don't keep this unchecked cleanliness chart cleanliness is a is a virtue in this in this world guys why did we why did i stop trading honestly i mean we're, we're getting moves left and right right now oh well, okay eyes is really what's moving sweet guys any other questions otherwise we're gonna wrap it up uh, we got ira uh up 700 bucks finally doing something right we were down five thousand dollars in this account now we're only down seventeen eight hundred eighteen hundred dollars what a freaking roller coaster.
roller coaster of emotions. QS up. Obviously, QS, the one ticker I didn't buy. Absolute disaster. BFT back up. Honestly, like, I was pretty bullish that we were going to have a nice bounce. I, like, the only thing that depressed me was the fact that I couldn't buy more. It sold off way more than I expected. Oh, if we could have been buying these prices, our portfolio would be killing it. It always kind of sucks when there's a huge bottom bounce and you're still in the red. You're just like, oh, wow, I really did bad trading. Whatever, investing and swing trading, it's all a little bit, um, a little bit different. All right, but yeah, nothing, nothing's new. I'm not gonna repeat the IRA account. I mean, we've we, like we've talked about these, and nothing's changed now for about four days. So. Um, yeah, that's exactly it, Bart. I've been, like I said in the beginning, I've been looking at the charts now since, you know, around six is like when I document trades, sometimes at five I'll document trades. So I'm looking at the charts then, then I'm reading news, then I'm, um, uh, what else do I do? Then I, you know, check more pre-market then at 7 a.m pre-market tos opens so i start trading from 7 till 8 30 and then i sometimes take a break uh and then we trade you know from 9 30 till 10 30 sometimes 11. After, honestly after 11 there's there's still opportunity but like my you know my brain is uh i don't know i, I feel like i start making a lot of mistakes and then you know giving back profits and then it's like working more and making less money it's it's uh, it's not a great place to be i don't know i also like just to kind of wrap things up at one point sweet guys don't forget to drop a like guys if you enjoy the content today i do i do appreciate that take care of life don't forget to subscribe if you're new as well Bren's wondering, are we in a dead cat bounce or stimmy, is stimulus going to push us up? I, I I think we're going to have a rally at one point. I, I'm not too pessimistic, honestly. Corona numbers are down. Vaccines are, you know, 2 million a day in the USA. It's freaking amazingly fast. Um, I'm quite optimistic. I'm always pessimistic with the overall market. I always feel like it's too high, but... I don't know, like, long-term, uh, you know, I'm always optimistic, I guess, at this point. Yep, Ramoli. Yeah, GHVI, finally moving in the right direction. Super true, Jeff, seriously. <sighs> Ren, do you take profits on last week's entries? I don't know, like, I, I totally know what, you're, what you mean. Like, technically, if I bought on Friday's low, would I want to be taking profits right now? There's probably a good chance I might. I always take profits usually too soon. So I don't know. I'm going to give it all another run and see what happens. They're my swing trades. I have an eight week at least minimum time horizon. So, you know, two months. I like, I'm not going to overthink it and then, you know, trip over myself. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate, appreciate the likes. I just wish I could have bought more. Honestly, all Friday and Thursday, I was just like, I want to buy more. I want to buy more. It would have been the right decision. If there's a big 10% down day on any one of your swing trades, as long as like there's no new news, just, I mean, do what you want. But me personally, if I can, I buy more. GME's in play today. Freaking crazy. I honestly don't know how people are trading GME. This ticker gives me heart attacks. Yeah, I, I hope it'll uh, help, Bren. I, I can only say what I would do. I, you know, everyone's got a different strategy, but that's that's how I feel. Gotcha, Bren, gotcha. Matt says buy on margin. Yeah, I mean, you could always do that. I would never recommend it, though. <laughs> uh, mm, you could, Esmail, you can always move principal of your Roth account 
for no fees. If you move out profit, there's a 10% penalty. So I've moved money out of my Roth IRA, but I've never moved out more money than principal. What's principal? Principal is the money you put into it because it's after tax money, right? It's your, it's your money that you pay taxes on. BNGO is always a favorite. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, I will see you guys then first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, don't forget to drop a like on the way out. What a day today. You know, kind of kind of cool little flow. Uh, I think we are all on, at least me. It was it was kind of nice, you know, dive into the markets a little bit more. Um, Siffy. Yeah, nice little pop there for sure. Low volume, though. Watch out with this ticker. You can get stuck in this one easy. Um, what am I trying to do right here? All right, guys, I'll see you then in the Discord. Doji in an uptrend. Nice, from Molly. Happy to hear. I'll see you guys then in the Discord, and I will see you guys first thing tomorrow morning. Um, also, don't forget to check out some new sections in the Discord. We got we got a little game section. We still haven't figured out what game we all want to play. I did a lot of research this weekend. I was watching a lot of YouTube videos on, on like, uh, certain games we could all hang out in. Um, I'm totally undecided, and I, I have no idea, honestly. Um, but yeah, you know, kind of like an interesting little side discussions that we're having. So definitely don't forget to check it out till then guys till tomorrow. I will, uh, I will see you then. And, um, just, you know, take care time for beer. Maybe get some IPAs in the fridge. See you guys.